Doug has a question for me. This is uh, a yeah. good time to ask it. Yeah, Thank you. Go, yeah. For it. go for it. Yeah, I'd love to ask both Dr. Carter and Dr. Gart uh, some questions. Um, what do you think is the mechanism God used to create life? Well, I, I, I have an answer. My answer is that uh, we don't know, and I think that uh, uh, people doing origin of life research, including myself, uh, at this point, uh, need to explore that and understand this. Probably, I, I happen to believe that God has created everything and continues to create, and that life is one of the things that was divinely created, but, but we want to know how. And yeah. I think Jim Tour actually would agree with that. Uh, you know, we don't give up. We don't say, well, it, God did it and we're done. That's not an answer. Right. The answer is, you know, God did it and we would like to know how he did it. So we know a lot, we know a lot about how God did a lot of things. Okay. We know about how God plays with light. And would and, you say and that what it does? Yeah, go ahead. Would, Sorry. You, would you say the naturalist and the uh, theists would be on equal footing then uh, to answer that question. We don't know. Yeah, in a but, sense. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think so. I mean, I, I'm not sure what you mean by uh, by equal footing, but I, I think I think that the problem with some naturalists is that they're making assumptions, and you've heard about it this whole this discussion. They're making assumptions that are not warranted. In other words, it's not warranted to say, "Well, we know how it happened." We don't know how it happened. Right. But we don't know how and God would, did it either. Well, I would, we don't I would know. Say, and, and so actually, I'd like to ask Doug uh, Pine Creek what, he what you would think about uh, the idea that perhaps we need to expand what we consider natural and, and include other kinds of things. For example, uh, the whole question of purpose, which has been kept out of biology and all of science uh, for a long time. But now a lot of biologists and not Christians, but non-Christians are starting to talk about the, the widespread presence of teleology in, in biology, in life. And uh, they don't think it comes from God. They think it comes from within the organism itself. But I think if we start admitting, just as an example, we start admitting that there are things that we've been excluding that perhaps we shouldn't be excluding. That may help us understand some of the processes that go on in biology and especially in the origin of life. And I think that the concept of teleology is maybe one of those. Now, sure, then sure. the argument could be, well, does that have to come from God or not? And that's a separate argument. But what I, like to, what I would like to propose, and I've been proposing it a lot recently, is that we need to expand our toolkit in biological research, because as what Otangelo was saying, it's been a long time that we've been using the same definition of naturalistic and gotten very, not gotten very far. So sure, I'm all, Sai, I'm all for that. Uh, the My only hesitation is that we don't use those types of questions of purpose to bias the results. So well, that's absolutely true. Uh, nobody ever wants to bias results. Right. I mean, I, if you've listened to what all of us have been saying, we're all scientists. None of us believe in biasing results. I mean, that that's the fundamental. You, you can't be a scientist if you don't hold to that. Right, because I, I honestly think right. there's a lot of naturalists who want to push away the idea of God creating life because they don't like the idea of God ruling right. over their lives. Exactly. But on the, same, on the same token, I think there's a lot of theists who want to say that uh, abiogenesis is impossible naturally because they want that concept of God in their life. So but you have a, from both sides. Mm -hmm. As scientists, it is about mechanisms. It is about explaining things. Now, it, as f philosophers, you know, sometimes you just have to say it's a brute fact. It's just the way it is. Well, but that's why I appreciate Sai's answer when he said, when I asked the question, how, what's the mechanism of how God created life? The bottom line is, we don't know. Even if a God exists, we don't know. It doesn't help anything to say God did it, other than maybe so, some bias towards wanting to believe a God exists or so, not feeling silly for believing in a God. I got 
no, just not, I don't have just this experience. I have, well, abiogenesis is impossible, so therefore God. And and I'm not saying Sai or, or Dr. Carter's doing that, but I'm I'm saying there's that proclivity to, to do that. Is, is there a primordial soup that God infused something special into and then life created? Or do you think life just started complex? How do you think it actually worked? Well, if Jesus can top. create fish and multiply fish, he can obviously make cells instantly, and he doesn't need theistic evolution. I'm asking Sai and I'm asking Doctor Gart and Doctor Carter. I'm a top-down person. I I think it was uh, things were um, created um, instantaneously or near instantaneously, um, but I can't say that there's I could I could point to a mechanism for that. Uh, I d I don't want people to think too that just because we can't know or understand a mechanism that a mechanism doesn't exist. Um, I think some people get very unsatisfied when they can't find a mechanism. I mean, we're kind of geared that way even in science because it's like you can make um, claims about your research, but uh, until th those papers aren't as widely accepted until you can show the mechanism that explains why you're getting the results that you are. Um, so we, we are very driven to find mechanisms and um, I, I'm uh, I'm satisfied with not knowing the mechanism of how God did it, because for one thing, I, I wouldn't be able to repeat it, so it wouldn't be empirical, because um, I know that there are certain processes that um, will never happen um, through natural pro uh, natural means. Um, how do you know that? Even if you have, uh, well, that's a good question, because um, the, getting to the point where uh, there, there's several key points that I think it would, would make abiogenesis impossible. And, and one of the most important ones is um, getting the, the specified order of, of your monomers linked together in a meaningful way. Out of all the possible ways of linking them, them together, the vast majority of them are not going to result in a three-dimensional structure that Isn't there has, things, has a functional. But aren't there many things in science which we thought were impossible to, to later find out? Sure. Mm hmm how do you know but, that that's not a situation here? Be, well, it's a it's a, a probability thing. I, I there's a 2019 2020 paper. I wish I could remember the author. I, I'll, I'll probably do a, a lecture on it where they um, uh, used a um, some as realistic as possible scenarios for trying to get a RNA molecule long enough that it would have um, catalytic activity. So right. to, to create a ribosome that was you know, minimum of like, say, 40 or so nucleotides long so that it, there was enough of it to, you know, loop over itself and make uh, a pocket that can have some kind of chemical uh, activity, some kind of uh, enzymatic function. But are you and, saying it's impossible or very improbable? Well, what this paper concluded is with the number of, of possible stars in the universe and the observable universe, uh, the, the, the odds um, you know, taking, you know, somewhat, uh, I mean, there's a, there's orders of magnitude where it could be off, but just trying to figure out how much carbon there is and on an average planet and, and all the, uh, all the possible ways that they could combine that, uh, there wasn't enough chances and time in our visible universe to even get to say 23, 24 nucleotides long in a sequence that is meaningful. In other words, it folds into a, a function. So, you are so he, invoked the, he invoked the unobservable hypothetical universe where there's, you know, maybe uh, 10 to the 70 more um, uh, planets and stars to make it possible or, or possibly even the, in the multiverse, which of course is beyond, if it's unobservable, um, it's beyond empirical. Um, you know, so I, yeah, I, I want to ask side the same question, but are you saying it's poss impossible or just very improbable? It, it's so improbable that it, it, that it, the only way to get around it would be to invoke multiverses, which goes beyond uh, what is scientifically okay. determinable. So yeah. okay. you could say it's improbable, but to the point where, for all intents and purposes, it's it uh, becomes impossible. Uh, do, you, do you believe God started with the simple and then built up, or did started with the complex? Uh, so. I don't know the answer as to how God created anything. 